everyone, what's up? This is Simon from DevTactic. In this video, I will show you how you can uh, create a calendar component inside your Ionic app. So uh, we've been doing this uh, uh, some time ago already with a uh, special Ionic component for a calendar. And this time we will use an Angular calendar because sometimes you have different uh, needs for your apps and this one works a bit different. So first of all, I've created a blank new Ionic app and then we go ahead and install the Angular calendar, um, which is the component we need. And then we also install Angular calendar week hours view, and I will tell you what this is later, and also Angular animations for some animations. Um, so let's go ahead and surf this once we've installed it. Uh, no, we need something else, I forgot. Um, what we need as well, uh, later in this tutorial are two providers. So one will be a custom event title formatter. Uh, you might guess this will format the titles and also a custom date formatter. So go ahead and create them already now and then run Ionic Surf so we can inspect what we're actually doing. All right, um, we need a few imports inside app module. So let's go ahead make this a bit bigger and then let's see um, here's the app already so let's bring it in some debugging okay um, so first of all we need the browser animations module which goes directly to our imports then we need some imports from the angular calendar package and especially the calendar module go to your imports and say for root so you might know this from other stuff like firebase already and then um, our second package we install the angular calendar weeks uh, whatever um, also needs to go right there um, our formatters are already here and what we need as well um, perhaps if you want it is some localization and for example i will do this for german uh, simply import the german package from angular common locals and also the register local data and run this so this block will help us to achieve uh, german names for example on specific components um, next we need an additional uh, copy config so perhaps you've used this before simply create a new folder uh, let's say config and inside config create a new file copy config.js and go to your package json somewhere at the bottom doesn't really matter and add this little block <clears throat> So this registers our own special copy config for the Ionic copy task. And I will also copy this in because it's a bit of typing. You can find all of these sources are inside the tutorial link below this video. So this is um, the standard copy config from Ionic. And we appended two more uh, elements. So one will copy the CSS for the Angular calendar package from our node module and the second from the weeks view uh, right to our build folder. And this means we can then simply import this stuff uh, inside our index HTML, uh, perhaps put it here uh, like this. Those files will be right inside the build folder in here. Um, so perhaps let's save all of it and oh, copy update finished actually. Uh, anyway, let's run it again and you see the two CSS files or the SAS file are appearing right inside the build folder and then our index will load them. So this step is also needed uh, in many different um, settings when you simply need some CSS file from an installed um, Angular module. Okay. Um, Oh, there's a lot to do, so uh, perhaps let's continue with our page uh, with the OMTS. 
So first of all, we need a reference point, which is our view date. So simply make this a new date. So it will be today when we start. Um, the type of the view we will implement is week. And I will also already add our local string, in my case, German. Uh, you could change this to French, whatever, English. Um, but I will make it with the German, just a few tiles. Um, this one will be needed later. I will explain what it does. And then we also need a new subject um, because we will tell this subject to refresh and then the component will reload. So our component, um, the calendar component depends on this subject a bit. Um, then you need, of course, your event source. So this is the events. I created some dummy events and you see we got a, some missing imports. I will fix them uh, in a second or perhaps already now. So let's bring them in. Again, a lot of imports and a lot of code. Check out the tutorial below the video for the full code. But anyway, we import um, some stuff from the Angular calendar package and then a lot of functions from date FNS. So these are used within the component actually. So that's why we need them here. Um, the calendar event, as I said, um, is the array of your data. So you could use the data from your API and just make sure um, they have the needed properties. And most important, the start and end date and the title, of course. But then you can also specify more and this is why this uh, calendar component is really great. It allows a lot of uh, customization. So you can attach uh, special CSS classes to your events. You can directly add the color for the event. Um, nice feature is the resizable feature and the draggable feature. So you can resize and drag events uh, just like you know from the Google Calendar. Uh, inside our construct, okay, um, to finish this up, of course, I got two events, as you can see, with a bit different time hours. So you will see this in the calendar, hopefully soon. Um, let's also add the alert controller so we can uh, alert out some stuff for our view later. Um, perhaps let's continue for now with the actual home HTML. So first of all, we can set the title of the view depending on our view date, uh, which will be changed. And then we can use a function calendar date. So this uh, comes from, uh, I think it should be included in Angular calendar, um, a nice pipe, which will transform our view title, hopefully to the right uh, thing. Um, is it already loading? Yes. We can already see we're in week six of 2018 right now when I'm recording this. Um, and this view title will be updated if we change the view of our app or of the calendar. So then um, I will add a little ion row and inside an ion column. Um, perhaps we make this a bit more uh, flexible so on bigger screens it will not take that much space so like this and inside I will add another row which will be split up in two different parts so the first will be three um, then we make another one six and then again three so we come back to 12 we could also add uh, the stuff here but just let's keep it there so it's a bit easier for us. Um, this is only needed now for some buttons which will help us to go back and forth in time more or less. So ion button, um, I can only clear whatever. And now something special comes to the button as well. So we use this calendar previous view and this will automatically without any further functions uh, change our current calendar view to the previous view. 
we also have to feed in the view. I'm not completely sure if we actually need this, um, but let's keep it there for now. And the view date is the one we specified earlier inside our um, controller. And then perhaps add an ion icon name iOS arrow back. And that's the first button. And the second button um, is more or less the same, but this time it's not previous view, but next view. And of course, perhaps use uh, iOS arrow forward like this. In the middle, uh, just like in any good calendar, you got the today button. So add a new button, clear icon. No, the actually no icon only. Uh, let it take the full space. And then this is now calendar today. Uh, same property like here. Um, I think we can remove the view pretty soon. So let's see. Okay, I'm on a big screen, so it will be small. And on a smaller screen, um, on a smaller screen, it doesn't look that good. Uh, what's missing? Let's see. Uh, full clear. Mm, uh, doesn't look that right. Three, six, three. Perhaps text center. Uh, nope. Um, I don't know. Something is wrong. Uh, I can only. Do I have to append this was full as well to make it fit better? Oh, yeah, that looks better. Okay. So. Um, this already works. We haven't implemented a single function for the calendar, but you see uh, we can already change the view uh, week uh, only using those directives on our buttons. So this is one really cool feature of the calendar. And now um, let's show why we're doing what we're doing. So this is the page of the calendar. And normally you got three views. You got the month view, you got the week view, and you got the day view. Um, the problem is from most calendars, you are used to a week view with dates uh, or rows like this for each day. And this is uh, not really supported out of the box. And this is why we use this special component um, calendar week, hours view, whatever. Um, because that module uh, takes care of um, using basically a week view of Angular Calendar and then adding a day view inside every day of the week. Okay, I hope uh, this is somehow clear. If you get other requirements, of course, you might not uh, need this special component. But if you want to use it, I will show you how now. So we start with the IQ Calendar week hours view and then there's really a lot you can uh, do inside that so let's start with perhaps the easiest one the view date is our current view date um, also pass in the events which is our own events next um, you could say something like our segments so this means how many blocks will be in one hour. Two means they are divided like half an hour each block. Um, you could also change this to whatever, four or anything. Another cool thing is day start hour. So if you implement a calendar for a client, perhaps they have opening hours uh, and start at six o'clock. And also they got a day end hour of uh, let's say 20. So you can uh, make the view a bit smaller by removing automatically the hours your client or your app doesn't need. Um, then uh, this value is actually the subject. Uh, where is it? Right here. So it will listen to this refreshed subject and whenever it is called, it will refresh the data. Then we could set the local 
also to our local local <laughs> uh, which is the German one in this case um, another cool thing week starts on um, most calendars I think should start on Monday so pick one which is Monday zero would be uh, Sunday I guess so um, let's see would this already work yes it will and it already looks um, pretty good out of the box you can see I can switch the views um, I haven't implemented a single uh, function or any specific styling so it just works really it is really uh, awesome but of course we need to implement some events so uh, we can already see that we can drag it but it's not working also um, one limitation of this calendar is that it uses the day views for each of those rows and the day view of the angular calendar um, shows only uh, events of this size so you can implement your own templates for the days and everything else but if you want to use this stuff out of the box um, that's just how it looks currently so um, okay yes no problem um, there are some limitations as I said also if we now go to um, perhaps this would be the iPhone size or some Android device you see the hour column is taking a lot of space away the names are too long and of course not aligned really good so that's why we need some additional CSS as well but let's finish the view up um, with some events so the standard one is event clicked um, handle event whatever and then pass in event dot event this will be the actual event the user has clicked on and you could say our segment clicked uh, which means we have clicked on any free slot so normally in that case you would open some chooser um, to create a new event or something like this uh, I will just pass in this event and then add some dummy data and then there's also event times changed um, this one occurs when you resize an event or drag it around so also event okay so let's add those three functions to our home ts uh, event handle event we got our segment clicked and we got event times changed course all of them will get an event as well um, perhaps let's bring in the CSS as well um, I will copy this because um, it's quite a few things so let's uh, see it one more time like it is now uh, okay and then let's add the CSS and let's see how it looks okay not that different um, but we got first of all the current day is marked in blue um, which is calendar today we have some borders added to the header and most important for um, the first child which is this our column uh, we've set a fixed width of 40 pixels um calendar event container okay um so the 40 pixels you can see uh, that now on a small device um, it will be still big enough and all of them uh not 100 percent but we will fix this soon by making the titles a bit smaller and also the custom event class for our uh, event title um, color white bit bigger font so there's a lot you can do with the CSS and also I added this one which made the events bigger but um, that's up to you because perhaps if you have a calendar and there will be only one event at a time it is really useful and then it looks great but if you might have multiple events at one time 100% um, 
of course won't work. Okay, uh, now we get closer to the actual logic of our view. So handle event is when we click on the event and in that case we will simply create a little alert to print out and show that we've clicked on the right one. So um, we could also say that this one will be an event, no, a calendar event. And then we got code completion and see we got the title of the event. For the message, we could say event.start plus to um, plus event end. Okay, nice code completion here. And of course, button to close all of this. And don't forget to call alert present in the end. So if we now go back to the view and click on event, we get the alert Tuesday 7 to 9. Okay, seems legit. This should be 10 to 12. 10, uh, 12. Okay, so you see, we now got the first event handler that uh, handles clicking on an event. Um, let's make now the hour segment clicked. In that case, uh, we create a new event of the type calendar event. So I just wanted some uh, dummy event in here. So let's pick this one. Um, and for the start, we use event date. So this should be on the starting date or the column we clicked on and the end will be event or add hours to event date one more. So just a one hour event. Okay, this is just for testing. And now you see if we call this dot events push, um, you might think everything should work with the Angular data binding and everything is updated, but you will see that it's not. So we click somewhere, but nothing happens. Under the hood, the events will be added, yes, but we are not seeing them because we need to call refresh next which tells the calendar to please reload the data source. So if we now click here, we see that a new event appears and many more test events. So um, of course, this is just some dummy implementation, do whatever needs to be done in that case. Uh, one more function missing, so event times changed. Um, we can drag them around or we could resize them um, but you see, it's not really handled yet. So we can say uh, event.start, um, which is the actual event we are touching, um, is equal to new start. Oh, I see we have the wrong parameters. So what we actually get here is event, new start, new end. And this will be a calendar event times changed event. Yes, just like this. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if we need something else. No, I don't think so. Um, uh, where are we? Ah, okay. And the event end is equal to new end. And then to refresh our view again, simply call next again and this will update it. So I hope this would be working, but I'm not sure if the error comes from the calendar or uh, our second package, because if we drag this around, um, you see the end times are somehow really messed up. If we change the height, okay, this uh, works for some reason, but most of the time the dragging are really messes up the end time. Therefore, I added this, um, where is it, is dragging right here. So whenever we get into this function, um, we check if this is dragging, because the problem with the time is this function is called twice. And we need to prevent this. 
So if it's already dragging, we simply return. Otherwise, we set is dragging to true. And once we are done with everything, we make a little timeout. So uh, timeout, perhaps I think one second is enough. And after that time, say this start uh, is dragging false. So this makes sure it is only called once executed and then we are able to drag it again. So now you see no wrong position anymore. Um, resizing works as well. Okay. Um, also one thing that's not working is now dragging between days. Um, this is an open issue on this special component. Um, but right now you can't drag them between days. Um, which is perhaps a showstopper for you. But if you pick this package, you need to handle this. Okay, so this is already the basic functionality. Now we just get into some little formatting stuff. Um, so I said, uh, one thing is this little tooltip really uh, drives me crazy. I don't like it, how it looks and why it is there. So we can go to our custom uh, event title formatter and let's change this by this. So we use the calendar event title formatter, extend it and override the day tooltip and return simply nothing. We could return anything else here, but we return nothing. And to make sure our app is using this custom event title formatter, we uh, not just import the provider right here, but we use the syntax you might know, uh, provide calendar, calendar event title formatter, use class, our class. And the same one uh, for the second formatter as well. Um, just like you are perhaps used with mocking Cordova plugins and this is a calendar date formatter and then we use our own class. So now um, perhaps it's not working anymore because the date formatter is wrong. Yeah, I thought so. Um, so let's go to the date formatter as well and we replace it with this part again. Check out the tutorial, really a lot of code here and I don't want this video to be too long. Uh, so in this case, we extend the date formatter right here and overwrite stuff like the view hour, the view, view title at the top. Um, so here we can use, um, for example, some German words and also the column headers and change how they look. So a short date, a uh, short day name and a smaller format right here. And then we go back to the app. Now let's see how it looks now. Hopefully it's working. Okay, so we got this German title up there, uh, which was previously a week. We got uh, shorter names for the days right here. And we got also this little number below. And also the time on the left is changed to a new format. And now if you make this a bit smaller or go to uh, Ionic Lab, um, we can see the preview on a device, which now doesn't look that bad. Actually, uh, we got the events, we can create new events, we can switch weeks. Okay, so again, all of this works um, pretty good out of the box. Um, with some CSS, you see that it's um, able to build this for Ionic uh, and inside your Ionic app as well. But there are some limitations, like uh, we can't drag them to the other days. Um, we have to click to go to the next week or day or whatever you use. So um, it's also not perfect. Perhaps it's perfect for your use case. So uh, give it a try. Check out the post um, for the full code and also for a comparison of some other calendar plugins that you could use with your Ionic app. Uh, all of them have some advantages and some disadvantages, so uh, pick the one that fits your need the best. If you enjoyed this video, also make sure 
to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and take care.